congratulations, Rich, to you because you're my bud, and I think that's part of the sports culture. You congratulate your friend who roots hard all year. <laughs> As if I did anything. Hey, but the, the text messages, the, the feedback. Hey, you dealt with it day in and day out. There was a point in time not too long ago where you were going to quit the Mets. But I you was, stuck it but out. I stuck it out. I can't quit you. I know. So congratulations to you and all the New York Mets fans. And, of course, Pete Alonzo, Polar Bear Pete, and the New York Mets. Yeah, it was uh, honestly... I said this to you earlier today, and I wasn't BSing you. I don't think I've ever reacted to a sports play, home run, catch, shot, anything like that in my life. In my life. Dude. I was I was in kindergarten when the Mets won the World Series. So I was just a little kid like, yeah, Gary Carter. You got to say kindergarten. Makes it seem like it's a further long Love, time ago. Mookie Wilson. Doc Gooden. Like, I was, I was my just daughter's a little age. boy in kindergarten. I was in kindergarten. So, you know, this to me, not to be a prisoner of the moment, first time ever someone hits a go-ahead home run in the ninth inning of a playoff game. That's right. In Major League Baseball history. Pete Alonzo, according to where... We used to work, SNY. And it's just one of the best stats. Is the first player in MLB history with a go ahead home run while trailing in the ninth or later of a winner take all postseason game. And we saw it happen. I didn't think it was going to happen. No. That's also what makes it that exciting. And let me keep this in mind for everybody. I'm not a Mets fan from New York, New Jersey, from the East Coast. I'm a Yankees guy. I'm sitting there watching. And I'm like, ah, man, it's done. Yeah. The Mets lost this one. I felt somber. It felt like that that funeral sort of feeling. Like, yeah, it's over. But man. with the it one sucks. solo home run, and then with the next batter. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh another over. home run. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, it's done. Ugh. And my brother hit me up, and he's like, oh, man, the Mets are done. Another one. And I'm like, yeah, well, yeah, maybe. Oh, and then when Pete Alonso dropped the pop up. Yeah. Oh, by first base, you're like, oh, no. You felt it unraveling. You're like, oh, man. Dude. The fact that they won that game after all that is what made it that much more exciting and memorable, and I think that goes down as well one of the greatest Mets highlights for sure, but just as a baseball fan, man, it's right up there with the best of them. Even if the Mets don't go on to win even the next series, I think it's it's one of the better moments in baseball. Yeah. And I'll, I'll hand it over to you, Rich, because I want to know exactly your thoughts and how you felt, but I feel like baseball... I mean, it was a bigger game, but baseball outshined the NFL last night when the NFL had a great night. That was a crazy game. It's a rare moment because yeah. we talk about how the NFL is king. Everywhere you turned, social media, ESPN, FS1, everywhere, is, it was, did you see what Pete Alonso did? You're like, yo, that's the magic of baseball. That's why I love baseball. And, and I hate to say this as a Yankees fan. That was a very magical, like, Yankees type of moment for the Mets <laughs> last night. But when the Yankees were on their dynasty, it was like magical, ridiculous moments yeah. like that that you could never believe would happen. That's what was happening, right? That's what happened for your Mets. And not only with Pete Alonso, with Lindor a yeah. few games ago. So I, it's been a great week for uh, you guys. Mets Met fans are all sharing in the sentiment that – Two of arguably your top five to ten highlights of all time have come in the last three days. I wouldn't argue that. And it's like, what's going on? So just a fun time to be a Mets fan. And to back you up, we all agree NFL is king. Kirk Cousins threw for over 500 yards last night, and that was like the backstory, Dude. You like five? that? Yeah. You like that? I did, I did like, like that. that. I thought that game was great. I watched the highlights and was aggravated that... Those games run at the same time because I would have loved watching both. I think Cousins reminded everybody why he's still that guy. You know what I mean? Lovable but lethal at the same time. He's one of the elite quarterbacks in the NFL. 509 yards, man. And Baker played his ass off. I was just going to say, Covino, don't forget the gutsy performance by Baker because he got (laughs) twisted like a pretzel and came back to play. No shame in Baker's game. That guy, that team... I still think ooh, it's going to come down. I, I think it'll come down to those two teams. To be honest, last night, I think that NFC South is Falcons, Bucks, and it'll be close at the end of the year. Baker, a very efficient 19 of 24, 180 yards, three touchdowns, no picks, but he's going to be outshined by Kirk D. Cousins. It was amazing. Forever. This was an all-time Thursday night football yeah, game. It was no, incredible. One of the greatest I've ever seen. If you're a sports fan last like night, points. your phone was going crazy with your buddies hitting you up. With, are you watching this? And it was either the Mets 
or that football game last night. Both were amazing. It was a, the most memorable Dude. Thursday night in the world of sports that I've had in a long I time. I had both games on. Rich, I had your Mets on my phone. Yeah. And I had Thursday night football on my big screen. And it was awesome to hear Al Michaels' voice raise a couple of octaves a couple of times throughout that game. Let's go. Oh, over. He, 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 he even took got excited. Yeah, right. He even got excited. Let's go over some observations to your takeaways from last night. There's so much to get to between that game and, of course, the Mets win. You know, I really love John Boy's breakdown of what happened. You had Devin Williams in there. The Brewers were in perfect position to win that game, right? Devin Williams with his. Fastball and changeup. The changeup is his deadly pitch. The dude was on. He's always on. He's a great reliever, a great pitcher. But John Boy's breakdown pointed out how someone in the Mets dugout, who was that, that told Polar Bear Pete, like, yo, that's the changeup. He was tipping his pitches. He was tipping his pitches and Pete Alonso by the slightest. You could tell when he was throwing the fastball because he would have his hand real hard into the glove and it was closer to his face. The changeup, you know, he has to have his full his full palm around the ball, a looser grip, a little lower toward the face. You see this interaction someone in the Mets dugout has with yeah. Pete Alonso. He's like, yo, that's the changeup. Pete Alonso knows the changeup is coming. You see the acknowledgement, too, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what did Pete Alonso hit a home run off of? That changeup that nobody hits off of. I thought that was awesome, and if you missed it, I don't know which call was the best call last uh, night. It had to be Howie Rose on the Mets radio network. Three and one to Alonzo. Williams sets. Here's the pitch. Swing on a fly ball to right field. Pretty well hit. Freelick back at the wall. He jumps. It's gone. He did it. He did it. Pete Alonzo with the most memorable home run of his career. Pumps his fist as he rounds second. It's a three-run homer. He's given the Mets a 3-2 to two lead. They all pour out of the dugout. Alonzo on his way to home plate. They're waiting for him. He hits the plate. He is first congratulated by Nimmo. Hugged by Lindor. There are a dozen Mets waiting for him. From outside the dugout, Pete Alonso keeps this fairy tale season going with the fairy tale swing of his career. Three to two, New York. Wow! And then on the plane ride back, Howie Rose walks up and down the aisle of the plane. Did you see that clip? No. And all the Mets start hugging him oh, and really? high fiving him. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see that. I thought I saw every clip. Oh. But man, I, again, not a Mets fan, just a baseball fan. And I'm smiling ear to ear listening to that, and I I couldn't believe my eyes. Everything about that moment, if you're a Mets fan or a baseball fan, if you're a Brewers fan, man, I feel terrible for you guys. Dan Beyer, you know, we'll talk to you throughout the day. I feel bad for any Brewers fan. But everything was perfect about it, dude. Pete Alonzo, we talked about it yesterday. Yeah, take a listen to what we said on yesterday's show minutes before the game. Polar Bear Pete Alonzo, if he wants big boy money, if he wants that contract that... His agent, Scott Boris, and everyone's talking about, if you think Pete Alonso is elite, you know what elite doesn't do? Bat 140 over the final two weeks of the season when the Mets were chasing a wild card. Now that they're in the wild card, when Pete Alonso's as cold as ice, that's no way to show the world you're the guy. Well, as I heard Dan Patrick say in regards to Pete Rose, you can't spell compete without Pete. Well, I don't know if that applies to Alonzo. Wow. Well, hey, hopefully tonight. Oh, wow. wow. Hopefully tonight, dude. Wow. Let's we'll wow. see. Maybe maybe Polar Bear Pete hits a bomb. Maybe Bear, maybe Polar Bear Pete is the bomb. Wow. That was yesterday. Nostra Davis. Yeah, talk about Nostra Davis, even though my greatest takeaway was that compete line. <laughs> Somebody isolate that. <laughs> Send that off to the press. Yeah, good one. Yeah. Now, that was yesterday. So for Pete Alonzo. To get up in that moment, you're thinking to yourself, man, he's either going to strike, strike out, which what I was thinking. Uh, I was thinking ground into a double play. Or (laughs) trip trip over his bat. I wasn't (laughs) thinking he's going to step up, and he steps up, and he does that, and then he does the the French kiss. He does the kiss, the chef's kiss. The French kiss. He French kissed the uh, first Uh, base coach. (laughs) He does the chef's kiss, and and, and he's so, the Italian kiss, Pete Alonso, the uh, mwah. And he's pumped up. Let's effing go. I mean, dude, you can't beat that moment. It's yeah. one of the best moments. And there's so many other things to speculate on. Not only was Devin Williams tipping off his pitches, and he's going to hate himself when he sees that. Yeah. Because the Mets knew what was coming. When you see those highlights, you're like, yo, they knew. They knew what was coming there. How about the fact that the outfielder really never had a shot at that? 
he hit the wall before he even had a chance to what, jump. What I found fascinating, because I've seen this done at City Field and other stadiums. I'm sure Dan Byer doesn't want to say anything about yesterday's game, but in right field, that lower area where fans are, was that in addition to the field? Because at City Field, where the Mets play, a couple years ago, they brought the outfield in maybe 10 feet to make like a special fan zone, and I felt like they had done that yeah, that's in exactly Milwaukee. exactly what it is, yeah. Well, it's not new, but it, it was not when they built Miller Park. That was not a part of it. That ball hits the wall, if not for the fan zone. And the weird angle of the fence made it impossible for your outfielder to even attempt to jump. Exactly. He sort of ran into the corner. Hits the corner, and that's it. He didn't even he didn't even go, make a real effort to even get it as a result. They put it in after Mr. 3000, that great movie. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it probably was after the movie, but but yeah. Yeah, it was not original to the ballpark. So, last night, just a wild night Magical. in baseball. One of the few nights where baseball sort of took the lead over the NFL. And did you even see Brandon Nimmo? That ridiculous story where an hour before the game, he found out his grandmother had passed away, but he didn't tell anyone on the team because he wanted to learn the lesson that you got to live life to the fullest. Mm-hmm. And you know, everything about last night just well, felt ridiculously magical. After that story, the headlines today or the other side stories were how much these Mets players actually care for one another. You know, and, and you see that, and I give credit to Lindor. I feel like this guy really changed the whole culture of the Mets. Uh, Pete Alonso steps up big, and he's a big superstar, and he's the hero of the day and all that. But I really feel like Lindor is that glue, and he's the guy who really has become a Met and loves that team. They're feeding off of that. And, you know, I think a lot of those players, as a result, they were there for Nimmo as a result, and they feel for this guy. And you see that connection, you see that chemistry, and you can't buy that. So I think they're pretty dangerous moving forward, Rich. You, I'm excited for you. You asked me earlier when did I think it was over and when did I feel like they had a, a, a pulse, a little heartbeat. When DB's Brewers hit those back-to-back home runs, Buto had had been so good a couple days oh, prior. Yeah, and tough. then I was like, oh, he had earned his, his keep because I looked at his stats. He was... He's the Buto's the type of reliever that's been back and forth, triple A big leagues, triple A big leagues. And I'm like, after the other day, I said, he'll be in the pen next year. I think he earned it. And then last night, I'm like, no. And on the flip side, I do want to say it is tough for, yeah. for the Brewers because they do have such a young, such a great young team. That guy, Churio? Yeah. Oh, my God. He's going to be a star. I think it's he's 20 years old. Heartbreaking, heartbreaker. But on the flip side, man, what a moment for Alonzo. And the, and the manager. Of the Brewers, Murphy, what a class act. Just saying like, hey, listen, it's not us. What could we do? The Mets' three best players, Lindor, Nimmo, and Alonzo, did what they're paid to do. What can you do? I love how you you could do. Score more runs in the first eight innings. You know, like you're playing with fire when it's one nothing, 2 nothing to that point. Yeah. Lindor yeah. takes the last play, double play, which, by the way, was awesome. Just just how the game ended was awesome. Everything was awesome except for the final call from Bob Uecker, which I heard, I think, uh, Doug Gottlieb play earlier. Yeah. Bob Uecker makes the call, and it almost makes you want to cry. You know, So I do feel for the Brewers fans it was a heartbreaker, but what an exciting night. And, again, this is from an unbiased person who just likes baseball, and I thought that was a great moment. But the only downside was there was two great things going on at once. Honestly, I don't want to complain and be the negative Norberto. Maybe that's why you need an extra TV. Like, hey, No, no, it's true, and that's why we're going to do our Rich's big extra TV game of the week later on in the show. But you don't mean to tell me, Rich, that there was a part of you that's like you knew what was going on, and you, you were like going back and forth. It was a sign of sort of annoying that you had to deal with two I, awesome things at once. I didn't even know what happened in the football game. I Until did. the Mets game was over, and oh, then I'm like, well. "Oh my god, I missed exactly! I missed a great football game." And then I realized my parlay hit, uh, and my teaser. But yesterday we talked about that. You could say, "Hey, we're fortunate; it was a magical night." But yeah. I, it was a little annoying that they were both on at the same time. Yeah, no doubt. Can I just ask a question? Because I've not wanted to rain on your parade in the first 17 minutes of the show. And don't you know worry, I won't start now. No, and DB, you did a great job. Right. Yeah, I, for sure. DB, I, but, I, I hate being on the air hey, when my team loses. It's it, all good. it happens with the Niners every year when they choke in the playoffs, so I feel you. I'll tell you what was interesting, though, is before the show, Rich came up to me and we're talking about it. He goes, don't you like just have some sort of appreciation for that moment? <laughs> And it was such a foreign concept. Like, I don't know who would. Like, I'm still mad at Danny's Raiders and Bo Jackson 
<laughs> running into the tunnel in 1987. Yeah, when like it's when your it's team. Your team I, I, like I, it's, I still can feel the appreciation. Maybe yeah, I'm like, a weirdo. I can't do it. I don't think you like seeing Dave Roberts swipe second no. in game four. Like no, That's not no a way. good, you know. But, uh, I'll give you a great example. When In 06, when my, my dude Carlos Beltran watched Adam Wainwright throw the perfect curveball of all time, game seven and the Mets lost, a little time passes. I'm like, man, that was the sickest curveball ever. Yo, props to Wayne, right? Like, sometimes you got to just tip your hat. Sure. Well, You're different. I'm not I wired know. that way. I would way. say, if that yeah. were to happen, it still takes a lot of time. Yeah. Tell you, I, I wish, it's like I sort of wish my ex girlfriend's luck in their life. Like, sometimes I'm like, you know what? <laughs> you know, yes. some people are just like, no, I'll never get over it. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I agree with Dan Byer there. You're an exception. I, I wouldn't have any joy or respect for that moment if I was rooting I, for the Brewers. You know what I don't do? I, I will say this I pride myself on not being. An a hole fan. I would never be like Dan Byer, nanny nanny poo poo. I may yell Dan. I'm sorry, bro. Hey, hey, all good. Thanks for not sending me a polar bear emoji like Iowa Sam did. By the way, I, I, hear we're, I hear we're calling him uh, the New, New York name. Sam. No, he's a uh, big, big apple, apple Sam. Sam. <laughs> yep. Yo, Sam. I, I'll say between you. That's and what I they've do. always called me, Big Apple Sam. See, uh, let me tell you because <laughs> I'm we're, on, we're on the streets. They're calling you Big Apple Sam because you said the. Ending of the Mets game was better than the ending of the Falcons game. Last I did. Night, well, right? We were all we all agreed that it was. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my, my point is, I'm not one to rub it in. So I could see where Dan Byer wants to strangle you because when when people hit me up on social media or text me when my team is losing with like almost a ha ha or like yeah, what's the score? I want to punch him in the nose. Okay. So well, I can only imagine on. DB, who's, you know, I know that's not his number one sport. Yeah. But his Brewers yes. did lose. You're sending him polar bear emojis? He was, I was celebrating. Actively. I wasn't putting down Dan or the Brewers. I was just celebrating the Mets. Why would We're all, we Take all him have to be chat. a little. <laughs> Take him off the chat. <laughs> I have a group chat right. with Dan, Doug, and Jason Stewart. And we were all, te- I was texting mostly me about the NFL game and, and the Mets game and Sorry, I just listened. And then to there was a, it was a polar bear, and then it was just Pete with an exclamation Pete! point. It's oh, a little yes. tone deaf, as they say. Yeah, that's <laughs> the center of the band. Dan, if Perfect. Dan, I am not. I'm not one to text people when their teams are losing. Uh, Rub it. I'm not that person. But last night, uh, well, last uh, night it happened. Yeah, last night that's did. the exception. Yeah. I wasn't. I wasn't trying to make Dan feel bad. I was just celebrating the Mets. I, listen, and, I was uplifting Rich, and I was kind of. Without down, Rich damn. on the text chain, but you know, to me, yeah. I said, <laughs> I, I even said, I'm not as big of a Brewer fan as Rich is a Mets fan. It's baseball's fallen off in my life as I've gotten older, but the effort to stick it to me, you know, by Iowa Sam was Listen, what stood if, out. If my Hawkeye somehow upset your Buckeyes tomorrow, you will not hear a word from me. All right. Hey, do you Promise. think uh, Kirk Cousins getting big time by the moment, and that's unfair? Is he getting overshadowed by the magical? Polar Bear Pete story, or are we just prisoners of the moment? Is he being... Remember when Farrah Fawcett passed away and no one really talked about it because Michael Jackson died the same day? That's a good question because Is I there like enough people acknowledging people, what Kirk Cousins did? Listen, more it was people, an all-time performance more, last More night. people still care way more about the NFL. It's just, this was such a big baseball moment it really that was. baseball pretty much tied the NFL last night, in my mind, and that's a rarity. For sure. Would it have been the same if the situations were reversed if the Brewers did that to the Mets. I think if it was a marquee player under the under the microscope, like a Pete Alonso, last game, he's a free agent. Could this be his last at bat as a Met? He's been struggling. And Yeah, it he, depends what Brewer it was, I think. I think Polar Bear Pete is, is popular enough where people knew what he was capable of in that moment. I, he came through. I think the New York angle pushes that. If it was Reds Pirates, I don't know if we're as crazy huh. about it as yeah. we are. And you know what? The Mets, are, the, the Mets are the Mets uh, are a big underdog in baseball. They play cross town from the Yankees. The Mets have a legacy of always met. They met. You know, the Mets are going to met. You know, much like the Jets and certain yeah. teams. So I think when a team that always is on the receiving end of, you know, they blew it when they when they come out on top, it's sort of like wow. That that was the and that was the point that that we had just talked about earlier was they're an underdog to the Yankees. But to the rest of baseball, the Mets aren't looked like that. They, 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 haven't yeah. won, they haven't won a World Series since uh, we were there. been to one in the boys. last 10 years. That's true. You know, you, you were there in 2000. And so, like, I still, and I think that in baseball, probably more so in any of the other sports, because the NBA doesn't have this problem anymore, the small market and large market, there is such a divide to it. So whether you like it or not, I feel like the Mets, just because of New York in front of that, are a part of that. In the NBA, we've had small market teams win, yeah. uh, you know, a bunch. 
But in baseball, I still think that there's a huge divide. I I feel, I, I they're not underdogs. I feel you. But, I'm yeah, a, I'm but, in my, they, just, but they just blew some opportunities. I, I'm in my 40s. Sure. I'm in my 40s. The Mets have been to the postseason less than 10 times. Sure. So... It, and in your world that you live in, you're always playing second fiddle to the Yankees, or it feels like that, yeah. I guess. So so it's it's understandable in a way. Right, well, no, more it is.